Canada has imposed 100% tariffs on electric vehicles coming out of China. Doesn't really change much, really. The cheapest electric vehicle out of China, the BYD Seagull, comes at 9700 US dollars. And basically, you can drive that for 252 miles on a full charge. Now, the comparable cheap non-China made vehicle is the, is the Chevrolet Bolt EV. And that comes at around $26,000. So, so even with these 100% tariffs, the BYD Seagull comes up to about, so if you double the price, the 9,700 I just told you comes up to about 19,400 US dollars. So not much, not much of a difference is made there. But so why has Canada chosen to do this? The idea is to reduce the dominance of China in the EV space and essentially protect jobs. But well, China's responded and let's get into that right away. Um, there's an article here in Reuters that came out today uh, titled China hits Canada with anti-dumping probe on canola imports in response to EV tariffs. China said on Tuesday it plans to start an anti-dumping investigation into canola imports from Canada after Ottawa moved to impose tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, lifting prices of domestic rapeseed oil futures to a one-month peak. Canada has followed the lead of the United States, European Union, and announced last week a 100% tariff on imports of Chinese electric vehicles and a 25% tariff on imported steel and aluminum from China. So just to, just to clarify things here, what is, what is China implying with anti-dumping? Well, the, the accusation is that Canada is essentially flooding the Chinese market for canola oil with basically oversupplying the Chinese market with, with our canola oil. Thereby, obviously, again, remember your high school, uh, your high school economics here with oversupply comes like a, a, a big drop in prices. And essentially this, this, they, they're proposing is a tactic by, by Canada to outcompete the local canola producers. So they're opening this investigation uh, in response to Canada's 100% tariffs on Chinese made EVs. Yeah, China has employed similar tactics before. So following the arrest of Hawaii CFO Meng Wanzhou in Canada in 2018, um, at the request of the US, China detained two Canadians, Michael Spavor and Michael Kovig, on charges related to national security, whatever that means. She was detained in Canada for nearly three years and on, on fraud charges. And however, in September of 2021, she reached a deal with the US prosecutors, which led to her release and subsequent return to China. And obviously during that time too, there was a lot of pressure on, on Canadian canola. So how are they able to leverage, leverage Canada's canola exports so greatly? What a lot of people don't realize is that China is actually Canada's second largest trading partner. Some of the biggest exports that we share with them include canola and pork, right? So why was this necessary? Why did Canada join, join in this trade war, especially in this particular moment where you, you could say Canada is not equipped to deal with, to go head on with anybody on, on trade terms? especially in view of where we are right now as, as an economy in terms of the affordability crisis. And it might be even more baffling when you think about the fact that Canada's climate goals, climate targets are actually pretty lofty. So we have decided that by 2030, we want 60% of the cars, the cars that are the new cars that are sold in Canada to be electric by 2030. So, and with the current state of our manufacturing, of our EV manufacturing, we're not going to hit that. Or at least that's the way it looks like right now. Our supply chain and our, our manufacturing of electric vehicles is not quite there where we can meet those targets at the moment. If you've been following the industry, you realize that the Canadian government has been investing heavily in developing uh, electric vehicle manufacturing here in Canada. Notable amongst those investments, of course, is the is the $2.7 billion uh, invested by the Canadian federal government and the Quebec provincial government in the not volt battery plant. There's also obviously the Ford uh, electric vehicle plant and the and the Stellantis LG plant in Windsor, Ontario. So there's been heavy investments in the in the EV market in EV manufacturing by the Canadian government, and this in a way is a is a way for them to protect their investment. There's obviously also the security, th the possible security threat of 
having a flood of electric vehicles from China on our roads here in Canada. Apart from the fact that you got to understand that these electric vehicles are essentially computers on wheels, apart from the, the data risk that they pose in terms of hackers can obtain data about, for example, your whereabouts and, and that kind of thing. And this is going to sound very Hollywood of me, but there's also the distinct possibility that as we kind of move towards self-driving cars, that some foreign party, for example, can can hack your vehicle, your electric vehicle, then you know, I think that might be a movie. Hollywood make that movie. So what is the big advantage that China has over the rest of the world when it comes to manufacturing EVs? Well, they've got a huge supply of labor, 1.4 billion worth of people uh, to rely on for labor. And they've also got an already established supply chain. They've been in the manufacturing space for, 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 for a significant amount of time. And it helps that they planned ahead for this EV boom and have put the infrastructure in place so that they can take the lead. Obviously, part of the reason why these tariffs have been levied is because people have accused China of unfairly subsidizing production of, of EVs in order to essentially outcompete. There's also practices involving the currency manipulation and all of that stuff that people tend to talk about. So. Who cares if China wants to subsidize electric vehicles and sell it to us for cheap? So the idea here is really with these tariffs is to protect local manufacturing, the local EV manufacturing industry that is being funded heavily by the Canadian government. Obviously, the American and Canadian EV markets still have a long way to go before they can catch up. So if the Chinese EV market is using both running off into the, into, into the sunset, let's just say we just took off from the starting blocks in Canada and in, and in, and in the U.S. So why is this important? These tariffs are important to protect jobs as we, as we develop the EV market and supply chain locally. So can Canada afford to go into a trade war, a full on trade war with China? Common sense tells you no. You, common sense tells you that the current government, the liberal government, Trudeau government, can not afford to have the affordability crisis that we currently are in get worse. Common sense tells you that the Canadian economy, unlike the Chinese economy, doesn't have as much diversification to fall back on. Yeah. Now, China also has this small little known alliance called BRICS, which they're able to now fall back on in the face of the challenges with regards to tariffs with countries that are allied with the United States. So perhaps the impact of the, these tariffs might not be as keenly felt as they might have been otherwise. But that's not to say that China gets away scot-free. China still has to deal with disruptions to the supply chain, which will greatly impact, which will greatly impact their economic growth. In fact, China as, as China has experienced slower than expected growth this year compared to last year. So China itself doesn't get away scot-free, although it has more levers it can pull. And uh, right now it's pulling the Canada lever on canola oil. So it remains to be seen where this trade dispute goes and how far Canada is willing to go to really enforce these tariffs. We'll see. For now, we'll keep an eye on it. Anyways, if you're new around here, like, comment, subscribe down below. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.